AMD just launched the Zen 5 architecture to be hosted in laptops. And this Asus ZenBook S16 is the first batch of laptops to get it. Now I've already seen it praised for its amazing efficiency. And that's the biggest thing, right? For laptops, it's the biggest win these days, efficiency, which is a balance between performance and battery life. So I tested it. I'll go over that shortly with you. And I'm gonna be doing more processor performance related tests, comparing this chip that's in here specifically to Apple Silicon and Snapdragon in another video. So definitely don't miss that. But today let's focus on the whole package, the laptop itself with the chip, since the interaction of the chassis and the chip, that's what makes or breaks a laptop's reputation. Just like my Snapdragon X Elite machine tests, we've seen that sometimes a chip could be amazing, but the packaging or the chassis brings down not only the performance, but the whole experience. I'm not gonna name any specific names, but you can watch my older videos. <laughs> there are some really good winners and not so much in the previous set of machines. Anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about this. Right off the bat, I noticed that this is a different caliber laptop from Asus that I've tried before. Whoa, Sir Aluminum. That is very unique. This screen is actually quite nice. It is quite reflective, but it's not warbly and warbly and warpy like some of the other machines that I've tried out, like the Vivo book. This feels quite nice, actually. <laughs> this, this is a surprise to me because I've had a couple of Asus machines. I've never had a Zen book, so maybe it's a very different class of machine. Uh, I do notice that in the middle of the body, it still kind of has a lot of give. The bottom is plastic, so it, it is gonna bend. The top though is very nice. Now, one thing I don't like is these legs. These pieces of rubber eventually wear out, especially something that protrudes so much. Also, when you're gonna be shoving this in and out of your bag, this thing is constantly gonna get that pressure and nicked. Not a fan of that little leg, but what it does, is it leans the laptop towards you, which is good. It's a good position to use your laptop in. So AMD Ryzen AI9. This is the uh, the 365 variety, one of the new ones. HDMI, USB-C, USB-C, and a headphone output. On this side, USB-A and an SD card reader. It's a very unique look and it looks good. Brand new out of the box. But I do have to wonder how this is going to hold up over time, especially with these laser cut notches in here. There's grooves inside, so they're probably going to collect dirt over time. And how is this new aluminum stuff gonna hold up to stains? Like if you spill coffee on it. This is something that only a long-term review will show. We don't have that information right now. But since this kind of design is so new, you gotta wonder about that. So if you're a dirty person, then maybe stay away from this. Now, one thing I will say is that this is the most fingerprint resistant laptop I've ever seen. Look at that, nothing. Now I did test the monitor's brightness and it's not the brightest according to the test, but it's bright enough and it looks really good. This is an OLED panel, so it's gonna be really black blacks. Look at that PowerShell window, beautiful. Black blacks and white whites, really nice contrast, even though the test said it wasn't. I don't know what that test is doing, what it's smoking, but pretty standard test that I ran, so I don't know what's going on with that. It feels bright enough and it looks really nice. This is a nice looking screen. It also happens to be a touch screen. I don't use that feature very often, but sometimes I do. And I took this thing out with me and started using it for a little while, a couple days, and the keyboard is okay. It's a little bit too much push for me, for my taste, but it's not bad. It feels very clicky, very nice, responsive. The one thing I have a problem with is the touchpad. So I started avoiding using it if I can, and I just hook up a mouse and I started using the mouse with it. And actually, most of the time I do that with my MacBook as well, even though the trackpad on the MacBook is incredible. The only difference is that if I don't have my mouse with me and I need to do something quick on the MacBook, I don't mind using the trackpad, it's okay. But here, I kind of do mind it. It's not very good. It's the diving board design where it doesn't work at all on the top and it works on the bottom. So you always have to kind of remember that. I don't actually know what the point of that is. Like why make the trackpad so large if you can't use the whole thing? The ergonomics of this keyboard feel right at home for me being a Mac user most of the time. Now I did do some initial benchmarks on this just to get a sense of 
how it fits in and I'll put some on the screen right now, but I'll be doing more comparisons in a later video anyway. Now this laptop is not that big, but it has a pretty big battery in there. 78 watt hours according to the spec sheet. However, on full charge brand new, it reaches 79,288 milliwatt hours. And that's something some of you pointed out in the previous video about the Xlead battery test that I've done. And this is just a guess here, but probably manufacturers wanna under report their batteries capacity instead of over report it because over time it's going to degrade a little bit. So they want things to last just a little bit longer. I really wanted to get to the answer of how efficient is this new machine? Yes, it's got a nice design. Yes, I like the screen much better than any other Asus machine I've ever tried. So my testing setup includes opening Chrome because I prefer Chrome. It has really nice developer tools. It's still on top as far as developer tools go for web. So I have 15 tabs open, not that many, I know. I know you all have, you're all gonna shame me with all the tabs that you have open, 30, 40, 70. I did recently try over 7,000 tabs, but that's a whole different story for a different video that's coming up soon as well. You'll see that video, that's, that's hilarious. Okay, 15 tabs, then I have uh, my terminal open, I have uh, Notion, my note-taking app, I have Todoist, which is my like to-do list, you can probably guess by the name, right? VS Code, and I have been working on this machine inside Visual Studio on a project that I'm currently working on, but that one is not part of my battery test because I wanted to do a cross-platform battery test so that I can do this on all machines, whether they have Intel processor, uh, Apple Silicon, Snapdragon, or AMD, and whatever other processors might be coming out in the next few years, I wanna make sure that this test can go across all of them. So I wanna use cross-platform tools like I just mentioned. Now, about this battery test. This battery test simulates my workflow throughout the day in half an hour increments, which is a completely scripted and automated process that I wrote that includes playing music, copying files, using Todoist, writing code, and running Python code. This includes the Mandelbrot test, which you might've seen on my channel before, which is a really intensive. It uses all the processor cores. It uses the browser, browses documentation, watches YouTube videos because that's what we do, right? No, you don't do that, of course. You work all day. You don't watch YouTube, browsing informational sites, cleaning and building a .NET Blazor project, and watching more YouTube videos. <sighs> Shame on you. Shame on you. Just kidding. Shame on me. Finally, all that gets compiled and logged, and we can generate some data from that. Uh, and that is until the battery is dead. Now, I prefer to run my machines on a high-performance power plant. If you don't know what that is, basically, it's uh, different than the best performance that the new Windows UI offers you. And I'll link a video down below on how to set that up if you need to. So if we compare this machine with some of the more recent machines that I've been testing, including MacBooks, my daily driver, MacBook Pro M2 Max, along with all the uh, Snapdragon X Elite and X Plus models that I've been testing recently, and some of the Intel machines, because that actually matters, right? Because AMD and Intel historically have been competing against each other directly, and we'll see that that actually matters here. Here is the Zenbook, smack in the middle. It looks like it's about 210 minutes is how long it lasted, but that line is very straight. Well, yeah, it's pretty straight, which means there's no fluctuation in battery drain uh, the longer the test went on, which is good. But the battery does not last as long as the MacBook Pro 16 M2 Max which is 240 minutes. It's beaten by the Surface Laptop 7 X Elite. It's beaten by the Galaxy Book 4 Edge with the X Elite, the Asus VivoBook S15 X Elite, MacBook Air M3, Surface Laptop with the X Plus. So all these machines beat this ZenBook as far as the duration in high performance power plan. This machine does last longer than the Surface Laptop 6 with the Intel Core Ultra and the XPS 13 with the Intel Core Ultra. See the little pattern here? AMD has now separated itself from Intel and heading towards the territory of where the Apple Silicon machines are, where the Snapdragon X Elites are. So as far as that goes, yes, this is doing better. Now, 
If we take into account the size of the battery and how much work was performed, and thanks for those that pointed out that my chart wasn't sorted last time, here's a sorted chart for you. We've got the uh, the king right now is the Surface Laptop 7 with the X Plus as far as efficiency goes. And you can see that our friend the ZenBook is right over here. It does beat out the Intel models, but it does not beat out any Apple Silicon models or any of the X Elite or X Plus models that I've tested. So efficiency is calculated based on the power consumed, which takes into account the battery size. And this is a pretty large battery size compared to some of the smaller ones like the Dells and the Surface laptops. So since this is a large battery size, it has to theoretically last longer, right? But no. So we get the power consumed and we compare that to the average work done and that gives us efficiency. Because if a laptop is super efficient and lasts a really long time on a small battery but doesn't get any work done, then that doesn't matter for us either. This may look like your regular spreadsheet, but have you ever seen your spreadsheet execute Python scripts, visualize SQL data, or integrate JavaScript seamlessly? Well, that's what Quadratic does. It's an infinite spreadsheet that'll make developers feel right at home. You can drag and drop a CSV file and instantly transform it, either using formulas like you're used to or code. You can even import Python and JavaScript libraries that you love. And as a multiplayer platform, Quadratic enables teams to share, analyze, and update data in real time across the globe. I've started using it recently and Quadratic leaves other spreadsheets in the dust. It not only offers an expansive canvas, but also enhances it with AI driven tools for smarter, faster analysis right inside the interface. So if you're ready to elevate your data experience, the spreadsheet of the future is already here right now and you can use it for free. Just click on the first link in the description below. Wait a minute. Just because I like things done a certain way doesn't mean that a lot of people will like it done that way. I like things on high performance power plan, but a lot of times when people buy these things, they're probably not even gonna mess around with the power plans or the power modes that's in the new Windows UI. They might just leave it alone, especially with a machine like the ZenBook, which is kind of middle of the line. It's not exactly super professional machine, but it's not like one of the cheaper ones, right? I think a lot of people will just leave the power plans alone. So. I know I don't have data for this for the other machines. I only tested the other machines on high power plan, but going forward, I might as well keep in mind the balanced power mode as well. So I do have one data point for that, and that's this machine. But before I got that data point, I did spend the whole night running this thing, thought I was getting some information, and it ended up that the whole night, the machine was actually plugged in. So of course, it was still at 100% doing his job in the morning. What a dumb move. But anyway, the next day it worked fine. And on balanced power mode, it lasted a long time. In other words, it was doing all the same motions, going through the same work process, and it lasted over nine hours instead of the three and a half hours that it lasted under high performance power plan. So yeah. The power plan makes a huge difference. Make sure you set it right. If you are gonna be plugged in and uh, you don't care about the battery, you might as well have it on high power plan the whole time because you're gonna get the best performance that way. But if you care about battery, if you care about you know lasting a long time, then you might wanna change around and switch the power mode. And I talk more about that in this video right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next test.